Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the second tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we are going to write our first C program. Now I have code blocks open here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close the start here tab and um, you know then I would need an empty file. Now you can have an empty file you know by pressing the keys control shift and N on your keyboard or you can find an empty file you know in the news section in the file option uh, in the menu that you see on top right so I like to use a shortcut that's control shift N and uh, you know before we start typing in C code in this file I'm gonna save it and the reason the reason why I'm gonna do that is because I would want to use the syntax highlighting and the auto code completion features of the IDE if you don't know what those things are then don't worry you know you don't have to be concerned just save this file before you type in any C code in there right so I have a, a folder on my desktop that's called C program files and whatever programs I'll be writing in this course I'll be saving all of them in this uh, folder currently it's empty it doesn't have any files but you know we're gonna save a file in it very soon so to do that you have to press Control s on your keyboard and uh, code blocks will ask you for a name for the file and we're gonna call this one hello underscore youtubers right and make sure that you save this file as a C or C++ file and uh, you know that's default setting so you don't have to you know change anything to have that and click on save and you would notice that the name of the file changes from untitled to hello underscore youtubers with the extension dot C so dot C tells you that it's going to be a C file right and uh, now we're going to type in our code and I would not expect you to understand anything that I'm going to do for the next five minutes or so but this program is going to be very basic very simple it's just going to have about five or six lines of code and it's going to display a string of text on screen right but you know I'm going to use a lot of keywords which would make uh, immediate sense to you but once I finish typing in on the all the code in this program you can pause the screen and you can note down the code on a piece of paper and then type it in in uh, the you know text editor region of your IDE and then execute the program and see if you get the same output or not right but I'm just going to type in code and later on you know before this tutorial gets over you'll understand what the significance of each and every line of code in this program is right so the first character that I'm going to type in is the hash symbol right I'll type it on the first line the hash symbol some people also call it the pound symbol but I like to call it the hash the next thing that you have to do is type in the keyword include that's I N C L U D E and then you have to follow that up with the pair of angle brackets now these can also be called the less than and the greater than symbols but I call them angle brackets and these are also the brackets that you use for your HTML tags and you know you can find them easily on your keyboard between these angle brackets you have to type in STD IO follow that up with a full stop or a period and then the alphabet H now STD here is short form for standard IO is short form for input output and dot H here is the extension because this entire thing is a file it's a header file right and on the next line you type in the keyword main that's M A I N follow that up with a pair of parentheses and you will notice that when I type in the opening parentheses code blocks automatically puts in the closing parentheses for me and this is the reason why I saved this file as a C file before I started typing in the C code and uh, you know it's it's a very useful feature and you would love using it on the next line on line 3 I am going to type in the opening curly brace character and when I would type in the opening curly brace code blocks would automatically get me a closing curly brace so you know all these things the angle brackets or the parentheses or the curly braces all these things would generally go in pair right so yeah that's it and uh, we're going to have just one executable statement in this program as I said it's going to be very simple so you know we have to display a string of text on screen and we would have to instruct the operating system somehow that we need to do that so we're going to use a C function for that and this function is called printf so that's P R I N T and then the alphabet F follow that up with a pair of parentheses again but this time within the parentheses you have to type in a pair of double quotes and again you know I'll just have to type in one double quotation mark and the other one would automatically be generated for me between these double quotation marks you have to type in the text that you want to see on screen as the output so I'm gonna type in hello space youtubers and I'll put an exclamation symbol at the end 
and after the closing parentheses for the printf function i'm going to put a semicolon and this is necessary okay this is part of c syntax all executable statements in c have to be terminated with a semicolon a semicolon is also known as a delimiter right so just you know remember that and uh, that's it you know i'm not going to type in any more code in this program i'll save this file and uh, you know on top you would see an icon that says build and run and what you want to do now is click on it and when you would click on it you would see that a new window would open up and you would see your output which is hello youtubers for our program and you would see a little more information process return 16 exit code and you know don't worry about that and it would also tell you the execution time which is the time that was taken by the compiler and the operating system to generate the output for you and it also tells you that if you want to shut this window, then you have to press a key on your keyboard. So I'll press the spacebar to close this window. But, you know, if you want to see something else, like, you know, instead of hello YouTubers, if you want to see hello world, then all you have to do is, you know, what am I doing? Yeah, all you have to do is uh, omit YouTubers and type in world and, uh, you know, click on build and run again. And this time a new window would open up and you would see hello world instead of hello YouTubers. So. You know it's a very simple program but you know there are lots of things in this program which i wouldn't be expecting you to know so i'm going to go through you know each element i'm going to dissect this program to the core and discuss each and everything so let's start from line one you see hash include as the you know first few characters and hash include here is a directive to the compiler that you know if there are things in the program that it doesn't understand then it has to look for the meanings of those things in the standard input output header file, right? So you can think of std io.h as a dictionary or a reference book. And just as a translator would use a dictionary to translate stuff from one language to another, the compiler would use the std io.h header file as a reference book to translate the C code into something that the operating system can understand, right? So when the compiler would start compiling the program, it would come across printf and it would uh, wonder, hey, what is printf? You know, I haven't ever seen it before. So what is it supposed to do? And it'll search for the meaning of printf in the standard input output header file. And it would uh, understand that, okay, you know, printf is a function that receives a string of text as the argument. And, you know, I'm just supposed to print that text on screen, right? So that's the significance of using a header file in your C program. And on line two, you see the keyword main followed with a pair of parentheses. And main is again a function. And you know, the execution of the program begins here, basically. So whatever codes present between the curly braces after main is a code that gets executed first, right? So in this program, we just have one statement. And uh, you know, the statement is on line four, that's printf. And, uh, you know, within the parentheses and within double quotation marks, you have some text that gets displayed on screen. So, you know, this is the only statement that's executed. But if you have more than one function in your C program, you know, if apart from main, there are other functions too, then, you know, main is the function that gets executed first. So, you know, it's something that you'll be able to appreciate and understand better when we discuss functions, which is going to be very late in the course. But, you know, for the time being, just know that you have to put main in your C programs. And if you don't do that, then your C programs won't work, right? And you will also notice that the syntax of main and the syntax of printf is pretty similar because you have, uh, you know, the name of the function and then you have parentheses after the function name, right? And that's true for both main as well as uh, printf. But the difference here is that printf takes an argument and that's a string of text within double quotation marks and argument is something that's passed to the function, you know, within the parentheses, whereas main for this program does not receive any arguments, though it can, but you know, in this program, it does not. So there you go. You know, we've just created uh, our first C program. So congratulations. In the next tutorial, we're going to discuss something interesting. And, uh, you know, please stick with me in this course and subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching.